Hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation, the channel that brings you daily Rangers updates. And you know what? We charge you nothing for the privilege of those daily Rangers updates. If you want to make sure you never miss out on all the latest goings on at iBox and hit that sub, ring that notification bell, guys. It will keep you up to date for free with the greatest team in the world. Well, you know what? We're going to talk a little bit about the Champions League uh, on this video today, this, this morning, this afternoon, or this evening, obviously, depending on when you are picking it up. We're going to talk about Jose Cifuentes. Apparently, he is here. We're going to talk about Glenn Kamara and Scott Wright and what earth is going on with those two. Um, and we're obviously going to talk a little bit about the upcoming game on Saturday. Well, last night, um, we found out who our Champions League opponents would be. And you know what? I was a little bit surprised. I was a bit surprised. You know what? I didn't actually catch the game. I was actually out working until um, probably late last night. And... I got back and the first thing I did, like, oh yeah, so check out what the Champions League um, score was between Genk and um, Servette. Now, fully expecting to obviously see the Belgian team progressing through to play Rangers at Ibrox on the 9th. Fully expecting, of course, to uh, you know to see this 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 amazing Belgian team. Yeah, you know, let's face it. Was it Heinen? Their captain said, "We're already looking beyond Rangers to the group stages. We can't wait for Champions League group stage football here in Genk." Well, you know what? You should always keep your mouth shut, shouldn't you? You really shouldn't, um, you know, make bold predictions like that and uh, look too far ahead into the future because do you know what? It's got a habit of biting you on the backside. And Mr. Heinen, you had your backside well and truly bitten well twice because you were stretched off. And obviously, as well, your team went out of Europe. Well, out of the Champions League anyway. So on the night, it was a 2-2 draw in Belgium. That was despite the fact that Servette were down to 10 men from the third minute when one of their key players, Crivelli, was sent off. Now, Crivelli is one of their top players, uh, apparently. That's what uh, the reports are saying. Look, I am not going to pretend to be any expert on Swiss football or on Servette even. Um, you know, I only know what you guys probably know and whatever you've read on the internet about them. I'm not an expert on them. Um, obviously, we'll do a more in-depth look at them closer to the time, closer to the actual game and uh, look at Rene Weller's team. But uh, apparently this player uh, that was sent off um, is a guy called Crivelli. Now, this guy apparently is one of their best players and now he will not be available to play in the first leg um, against Rangers at Ibrox. He's called Enzo Vito Gabriel Crivelli. He's 28, he's from Rouen in France, he's a forward. Um, scored four goals in 19 games since he joined Servette in 2022 from Sat from where well, he's been all over Khan, Anger, Bordeaux, Istanbul, Antalya Spor, where Haji Wright was was. Um, French under 21 international in 2015 and 2016, one of their top players, and now he is out for the first legs. So good news for Rangers. Now he obviously finished 3-3 on aggregate, but Servette won 4 1 on penalties in Belgium on the night as Genk completely and utterly blew it in the penalty shootout. I think the word bottle may have come into it somewhere. There may be a bit of a bottle and a bit of a... <coughs> as well, maybe. I don't know. But uh, this has obviously meant that Rangers will now play Servette in the qualifying rounds. Now, this was tweeted out earlier on Twitter. So, the winner of Braga versus TSC, winner of Rangers versus Servette... Uh, will take on either of the unseeded teams. So it looks like from the um, from this that uh, Rangers will face either Panathinaikos, uh, Marseille, PSV or Sturm Graz. Um, Braga obviously facing the other one. That draw will take place close to the second leg. But now Rangers know that they're going to play Servette and they will play either Panathinaikos, Marseille, PSV, Sturm Graz, should they be successful. But we're not looking beyond that. We're focusing on the Swiss team. We're focusing on getting past them. We're focusing on putting the best versions of ourselves out there on Ibrox on the 9th of August. So Wednesday, the 9th of August at Ibrox, you will be able to see Rangers versus Servette in the Champions League third qualifying round. First leg as the teams fight for the right to go into the qualifying round for the group stages. The return game will then be on the 15th or possibly 16th, I've read now, at Stade Geneva, the, the Servette Stadium in Geneva. There it is. 
uh, quite a nice little simple stadium there. Um, obviously, will be filled at one end by Rangers fans as we obviously take over the city of Geneva on that day. And also, a nice little away trip as well for those of you who want to head over to Switzerland. Geneva is a very nice city. I've been there twice. Very good city. Brilliant place to go out. Nice atmosphere. Uh, lots of nice bars and restaurants in Geneva. Lovely people. Great place to go out um, <clears throat> and celebrate and obviously get ready for a second leg against Servette. But a very interesting game nonetheless. A must win? Yes, absolutely a must win. For me, Rangers have got to get to Champions League group stages this year. I, You know, look, yes, maybe after Christmas, drop down to UEFA, Europa League. Um, but, you know, I don't want to be playing Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday straight away and playing catch up from day one uh, with that lot from across the city, um, you know, because of that Sunday fixture due to the Thursday fixture in the Europa League. Plus the Champions League is where it's at, it's where the money's at, it's the prestige, it's the coefficient points. We need it. And this is going to be a huge, massive game, the first, most biggest game of the season. It'll be actually a series of four, hopefully, massive games ahead of Champions League group stages. We will be live streaming the game here on Glasgow Rangers Nation on the 9th of August. So come and join us for that. <coughs> like I said, we will be um, bringing that game to you. Anyway, let's move on. Now, apparently, this man is now in Glasgow. Uh, apparently. Um, haven't seen him. Um, no doubt. Um, Rangers fans, if you have been stalking and st and uh, staking out Glasgow Airport, you no doubt would have seen, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Jose Cifuentes arrive from LA. I wonder what he quite makes of Glasgow after being in LA. Now, apparently, <coughs> Rangers will steal their ninth summer signing at some point, probably tomorrow now. Um, so Fuentes arrived ahead of his £1.2 million transfer from Los Angeles FC to Rangers. The 24-year-old is expected to sign a four-year contract. It's a four-year deal for Sofrentes and Rangers, uh, subject to medical and the relevant paperwork been finished. Uh, Sofrentes has made 19 MLS appearances this season um, and had already agreed the pre-contract ahead, obviously, of the break in the MLS. Uh, Rangers... Um, are obviously keen to get this deal done, finished and over the line. But great to have Mr. Jose Cifuentes in Glasgow, ready to sign on the dotted line. I don't think he'll be ready for the Kilmarnock game. And I think it'll obviously take time for him to adapt to a different form of football. The MLS is a very different style of football, not as quick, not as uh, intense as the SPFL. So I think obviously, you know, given the fact that uh, that Jose Cifuentes has missed most of the preseason, well, all of the preseason, he's going to take time to adapt to Rangers, uh, get to know his new teammates. So I don't think, you know, you can, <coughs> excuse me, expect an instant impact from Jose Cifuentes. It will take time. Um, and once, obviously, he is up to speed, then he will be able to play for the club. Um, Rangers will be obviously anxious to get Cifuentes into the team as soon as possible. But obviously, we need to obviously not rush him, make sure he is ready to go, make sure that he is good, good, and make sure that he is fit and um obviously properly acclimatised to the Scottish game before we introduce him to the first team. Now, two players who may well be on their way out of Rangers. Um, it's been rumoured a lot over the last couple of weeks are Scott Wright and Glenn Kamara. Now, Scott Wright has been linked with obviously a move to Pendik Sport in Turkey, whereas Glenn Kamara has been linked with several teams and a substantial transfer fees. Hang on for that. That is coming very, very soon. Now, Scott Wright has jetted out to Turkey twice, apparently, to talk over a move to Pendik Sport. However, he obviously has been at Okunhawi training with his teammates, well, current teammates, and he also appeared at the open training session as well, which obviously has cast doubt over Scott Wright's move to Pendik Sport. There are reports coming out of Rangers that uh, Wright is not keen on that move and wants a move elsewhere, <clears throat> very much to a club, a club similar to Rangers, which obviously would be very hard to find, short of a move down south. But I very much doubt that any of the big clubs in the EPL are going to want to sign Scott Wright. 
Now, Scott Wright has been told he can leave Rangers this summer and that he is surplus to requirements. He will not get the minutes that he is looking for this season. So it certainly seems to be all up in the air again as regards Scott Wright. After we thought that obviously that deal was done, the Rangers obviously had agreed a fee with Pendix Sport. It now appears that Wright is not keen on that move. That is what reports are currently saying about the transfer of Scott Wright to Pendix Sport. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this latest development. Now, the other player who has been heavily linked and has, and has been told that he can move sooner rather than later is Glenn Kamara. Now, Glenn, obviously during the 55 season, was a fantastic servant for the club, probably one of our best players during 55. He was also very good during the Europa League run as well. I mean, that goal against uh, Leipzig in particular and his tribute to Jimmy Bell was outstanding. And, you know, I think he was brilliant during that uh, Europa League run. However, last season, it did seem like he had down tools, that he wasn't interested and that he was nowhere near the player that he was during the 55 season, really showing that I think he'd, uh, the love affair between um, Glenn Kamara and Rangers was well and truly over. Now, a number of teams are reportedly interested in securing the services of the Finnish international. Leon Stadrim from France are both interested in securing Kamara services. Also, Borussia Mönchengladbach, which I think is a fabulous name for a football team, um, from Germany, also interested, as well as obviously Leeds United um, of the championship down south. Now, with all these teams interested in Kamara, that obviously serves Rangers well meaning they can get top dollar for this player. Now, the rumour has it, and the re latest reports are that Kamara will be leaving sooner rather than later for one of those four destinations, and the fee will be £5.5 million. Pounds. Now, if you consider that Glenn Kamara cost Rangers £50,000, £5.5 is a phenomenal return and a, fan a fantastic piece of business for the club. You know, a huge, huge profit. And that 5.5 million can then be reinvested either into obviously writing off the player transfers this summer or into looking for a new centre back or some new defenders. That obviously has been something that has been very highly rumoured over the last couple of weeks after some defensive horror shows during pre season. There were reports on a couple of websites earlier that I was reading. Um, saying that Ben Davis has been told that he can leave Rangers and that he is no longer in Michael Beale's plans. However, I don't find this at all true at this moment in time, given the fact that Rangers are desperately so, so short of fit central defenders for the start of the season. I find it highly unlikely that Davis will be told this and Davis will be put out kind of as a, you know, put out there and obviously not included in the team. We are going to need him. You know, I know a lot of Rangers fans don't rate him, but unfortunately that we are in a position where Connor Goldson is highly unlikely to start the season. Um, Leon, Leon King is still overcoming injury. We don't know the extent of Leon Balogun's injury from the other day. So we do need to make sure, I think Ben Davis will need to be part of the team. Look, I think until we actually sign somebody, I wouldn't release Davis. Yes, I don't think he's the best defender in the world, but at the same, by the same time, we, can we really afford to leave ourselves short at the back? No, we can't. And surely even a 50% uh, 50 to him, Ben Davis, is better than... Um, some youth product who is not yet up to playing first team football. So for me personally, um, I wouldn't obviously sell Davis yet until we've actually brought some in, in to replace him. Hopefully that money that we get for Kamara can be used and reinvested into the squad to bring in centre backs. Now, there's obviously been, the Rangers have been linked with every man, his dog, his alligator, his budgerigar, his rabbit and his hamster this uh, this pre-season. Eight signings, probably going to be nine um, hopefully by tomorrow morning when we catch another video, it'll be nine signings, obviously, to Jose Fuentes' arrival. You know, there's even been rumoured that Joe Aribo could return to the club. Apparently, Russell Martin, the new Southampton manager, doesn't see Aribo as being part of his plans. Now, Aribo, the former Rangers man, um, has uh, one of the teams he's been linked with coming back to and returning to is Rangers. Now, whether that's the actual case, whether that's just media speculation, which I probably think it is, it's all media clickbait, I Look, I think it's highly unlikely that he comes back in, given the number of signings that we've made in the forward areas. I think any more signings, any further signings for Rangers will be in the defensive area and possibly also goalkeeper as well, if it is the case that Robbie McCrory does move on seeking first-team football. Now, 
Obviously, the build-up continues ahead of the game on Saturday. Obviously, we will bring you that game here, live stream. Watch along with Glasgow Rangers Nation of that first game of the season. Look, I don't think it's going to be fast, free-flowing, attacking football from Rangers. It's going to take time to gel, get this team ready. I think the first few games of the season are, are going to be all about getting this team to gel, getting this team you know, ready for the rest of the season. With two faces coming in, you cannot expect fast, you know, free-flowing, quick, embedded football style straight away from day one. It just isn't going to happen. Uh, so, you know, the Kilmarnock game, I think, will kind of form part of that, uh, that bedding in process for Rangers, part of that development process. You know, you look at those first fixtures that we've got this season, uh, Kilmarnock away, obviously, we begin with, then Livy, then Ross County. You know, three games that we're going to need to really use to get ready for that very vital first Old Firm game on the 3rd of September. Look, personally, I want to be going into the Aberdeen game on the 30th with, <clears throat> with six wins under our belts. And I want to be going in to that to Hibs game on the 21st of October with eight wins under our belts as well. I think this squad is more than capable of that. I think this team is more than capable of being there and having those eight wins by the time we come to play Hibs on the 21st of October. Guys, what do you think? Let me know. How many points do you think we will get from those first three months of the season? Well, guys, thank you so much for choosing to watch another Glasgow Rangers Nation video. Please hit that sub, ring that notification bell, and help us to keep building this channel up and building towards that 3K target by the end of August. Thank you for watching. As always, I need you to do two things for me. Number one, smash that like. And then...